First and foremost, we have a mysterious black envelope. And this is actually pretty exciting. This is a retro gaming magazine. The Video Game History Foundation actually releases, uh, well, not releases, has a subscription-based service, which think what you will, but as a blind box random grab bag of their duplicate magazines from any era in gaming. And so previously I have gotten magazines for Halo 3 and Metal Gear Solid 2, and here we have a classic PlayStation magazine featuring Dead or Alive, Resident Evil 2, and Tekken 3. So this is from the PlayStation 1 era, March of 1998. This is issue, only issue number 7 of the PlayStation mag, which is insane. I have a huge collection of older PlayStation mags, um, and so I am excited to add it to my collection. And this one, it's almost kind of like it's graded. It's all protected in the sleeve with the cardboard backing, and they even have a certificate of authenticity confirming that it is 100% legit, signed by the director, co-directors of the Video Game History Foundation, which is pretty sick. I love collecting these. Um, and like I said, I have a huge collection of mags already, and nice to add these like specific ones to my collection as we go. However, that's not the only magazine I have to show off. I have this giant package from the UK that I am very excited to open up that I honestly didn't realize would come so quickly. That is the wrong button. Here we go. So this is hopefully in decent condition because there is definitely some exposed stuff here. I know this camera is pretty dark. Um, we have here... I'm assuming this is what this is. If this is something different, my link will be wrong. Yeah, this is what it is. Hell yeah. So this is the E1M1 magazine collection. This is the world's first supposedly old school shooter mag. And so this episode has Postal 2 on the cover. This is issue number 6. So they have, I believe, 6 issues so far that I picked up. This has The Darkness. We've got a Medieval. The <laughs> these covers are sick. And these are all signed. We've got Dusk. Great game on Steam, along with the Medieval. Go check them out. They are new retro, uh, new retro games. All right, music turned up a little bit. We got Ion Fury. Awesome shooter, by the way. And we got Viserafest. Viserafest. I've not actually heard about that one. I will have to check it out. So, these are magazines. These were in a really weird order. But these, of course, are magazines about old school shooters and modern, modern retro shooters that are really freaking awesome. I will have a link to them posted in chat here. Getting the full set, especially imported from the UK, was not super cheap, but worth it because I freaking, Casey can't tell, I freaking love gaming magazines and especially supporting publications that are still supporting the old school formats and stuff like that is really cool. So we've got stuff about Serious Sam. We've got full art here from Ion Fury, concept art, reviews, Half-Life, that's awesome. So these are great. I just love going through these in my spare time. Lots of awesome articles, and I'd love to contribute to some of these someday. Um, a gaming magazine of some sort. In fact, my original, uh, my original career, intended career path was actually to work in games media for like a magazine or something. So, that's pretty neat regardless. I am smashing my iMac keyboard and it's making a lot of sound. There we go. So, I'm gonna turn down my headphones. Is the music still balanced? Okay, I had some requests to turn it up, so I turned it up. Hopefully not too loud. It's not cover to cover ads. Yeah, that's the thing. So when you support a kind of more indie magazine like that, and, you know, it is a little bit more expensive, but you are supporting a publication that is basically, that, that is kind of meant to be, uh, you know, it's meant to be a community-backed project. You don't get constant, like, PC builder ads or anything like that. You just get straight content and so to me it's worth it and especially since they don't release super often so you don't you know you, it's not like you're paying for it constantly it's super awesome so i'm subbed to a couple like uh enforce for nintendo stuff i've got retro gamer mag and a few others like that so there's that so here we have something that will tie into one of our topics after we're done here so i'm actually gonna save it for last which means we have a really big package to open and i'm not sure exactly how to make it work. So I'm gonna switch on over here to our bird's eye camera. 
which reveals how messy the studio is because I am in the middle of like five major projects at once. We have a giant box to open here. I'm going to take off my headphones for this. Now this was not something I expected to come already. This is from Ye Old Limited Run Games. I pre-ordered this months ago and super stoked to show it off. Whee! Oh yeah, we got a box in a box. Okay. Well. <laughs> Juggling all of this is fun. What this is, is it is Doom 64. Limited Run Games does limited re-releases of older games or prints of games that were digital only. And they do awesome collector's editions and things like that. We'll get a close-up look at these in a minute. They come with goofy little trading cards that I don't really care for myself, but they exist. And then this is the Super Omega Collector's Edition, which I had to get because it comes with something that I am a huge fan of. Doom 64, by the way, is kind of a weird entry into the Doom franchise, but it is a lot of fun for its own game. This was really well packed. A box in a bag and a box in a box. This is the Doom 64 helmet. <laughs> I had to when they when they announced they were doing this I just absolutely had to because I specifically have the uh, the Doom Eternal helmet as well as my Halo 3 helmet collection over on my retro setup by my LGCX I will post a picture of this on Twitter after the stream it comes with it I'm also a pin collector it comes with an amazing Doom floppy pin I have pins distributed all over the studio as decor we got probably a rolled up poster, not too worried about that. Mainly because I'm out of wall space at this point. Man, they make this stuff real. I will say, look how much garbage I have created that I have to just figure out what to do with just by opening this one thing. That's always frustrating. We always have mountains of boxes to get rid of whenever garbage and recycling days come. And another bag! Okay. Oh my god, it is glorious. <laughs> Look at this thing. <laughs> Rip and tear. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it actually fits my big head. This is actually a pretty giant keyboard. Um <laughs> or helmet rather. This is a pretty giant helmet. That is awesome. <sighs> Alright. I'm impressed. This is pretty nice. This is actually surprisingly well made. You can see through it for the most part. It's got like straps in here to actually keep you comfortable. 
doesn't have much breathing capability or a voice changer or anything, but we don't need a voice changer. It's built in. <laughs> I am so stoked. I'm going to have to clear off one of my shelves to put it with the rest of my helmets, but this is freaking awesome, man. Yeah. All right, and then we have the actual the, the, the game itself here, which obviously didn't come in the helmet. That was sold separately. This is the game itself. I'm not going to open this. Well, I'll open it real quick. Uh, this comes in a classic Nintendo 64 style box, which I love. I don't actually have very many of because all my Nintendo 64 games were, uh, were used back in the day. But, you know, you can see my eyes through the helmet. That's sick. So I don't want to open this without bending it up too much. Oh, come on. There we go. Inside. <laughs> Alright, so this is just a dummy cart. Oh, it's heavy too. This is just a dummy cart. They do these with some of these releases. This is the heaviest one I've seen so far though. It is a gold Doom 64 cartridge. Again, it, there, there's nothing in it. I guess theoretically you could try to mount a PCB in it, but it's... It feels pretty metal that might short out. I wouldn't recommend. I don't even know if it's like accurate to size, but... Pretty sick as a display item. And you get a behind the scenes booklet. Pretty cool stuff. You get another poster, which I'm just gonna leave here for now. And then you get a port of Doom 64 for the PlayStation 4. Which is pretty sick. I think they have for Switch as well. So, awesome stuff overall. Oh wait, is, th there's, is there more in here? No, that's just the weight of the cartridge. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, sometimes I pre-order like, you know, sometimes I pre-order game collector's editions and stuff like that and don't always feel I got my money's worth. This is not the case. This was definitely worth its weight in fake gold cartridges. There we go. Alright. Pretty freaking sick. Alright, we got one final unboxing thing that's just a teaser. Uh, in case you are unaware, I do stream Pokemon card unboxings and openings and things like that over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash eposfox. I also have a YouTube channel called HoloQuest, uh, where I post opening videos and the like too as well. Um, and I believe, since there's Pikachu on the box here, that this is more product for that. Straight from Japan. Oh, yeah. So this is the new Japan-exclusive Elite Trainer Box for one of the Japanese-only sets called... I actually forgot what it's called. Something Ice and Black Horse thing. I don't remember at the moment. But this is two parts of the set that becomes Chilling Rain here in the States in June. So... I'm opening up all the Japanese stuff early, so this is the Japanese equivalent of an Elite Trainer box. So it comes with two booster boxes, a bunch of cool card sleeves, a deck box, and then this is actually a double wide deck box. Usually they're smaller, so this is pretty sick. Thank you for the kind words, T-Mad TV. Thank you for stopping by the stream. All right, let's get everything together. And since you guys are being so awesome today, this stream is actually going surprisingly well, and you all have been very supportive. I want to tease something. I have never done merch before on this channel. I've not liked it. I don't want to slap my logo on a t-shirt and be like, buy it, because you'll love it and support me or whatever. And so I've been working on making merch that you guys will actually like. We're keeping it old school VHS style, and merch is coming this month. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have limited runs of a bunch of different cool designs and things like that over time. And I'm hoping to build both, you know, kind of toy slash, you know, aesthetic products that I at least collect and like, and if you saw today's stream, you will pick up on what some of those will be, as well as functional stuff, like a pretty badass mouse pad. We'll have more details soon, I'm not really supposed to say much, uh, but we'll have some soon. So if you've been shopping for a desk mat, may maybe, maybe hold off a few weeks. Maybe hold off a few weeks. <laughs> 